First, sports are a great learning experience for kids. They teach them hard work and how to succeed on a team. Today, one Virginia Beach group takes it a step further. It's the Making of a Man event. On any given day, the VA Titans basketball team is working hard on the court. But on this Sunday, we found them here, soaking in an important success story inside of this library in Virginia Beach. They're learning lessons off the court. It's the team's annual Making of a Man event, a chance for them to get inspiration from successful mentors and role models. And the point is to focus on them not just as athletes, but as people. So we bring them together and we bring them together with mentors from the community, role models, people who have come from similar stages of life or different walks of life and who have made something of themselves and are coming here to talk about their experiences, inspire the kids. It's something Coach Cornell Helphill says is necessary in order for them to grow, not just athletically, but in every aspect of life. There's so many avenues for kids to um, occupy their mind instead of just sitting on the couch and, and doing nothing. It's just as a parent, you have to take that initiative and find something for your kids to do. On this Sunday, they're hearing from Delegate Alex Askew. Team founder Samuel Barcliffe says hearing these testimonies gives these young men a chance to dream big. We find that each youth has a story to tell. Sometimes taking the moment to listen, figuring out what you can do to actually help them out goes a long way. You know, each individual deserves that opportunity in our eyes. An opportunity to be high achievers both on and off the court, thanks to role models showing... Oh, okay. I got, I got some for that. Okay. <laughs> all right. To help you all pay attention and keep you all quiet, for every time I look and catch some of you in the act of laughing or giggling or you're looking down your wall, I'm going to ask all of you students to stand up and to sit back down. It sounds childish, but after a while, you get to look at each other and be like, bro, shut up. So, yeah. First, I would like to begin by sharing a little bit of my journey. Um, I heard something earlier today that, uh, stand up. Stand up. Sit down. There's always one out there, you know, that wants to try to test your answer. Anyway. Okay. I heard something earlier today in regards to therapy. I happen to be a counselor and um it really struck me when it was said that you know, therapy was really thing back then, and that's very true. Back when I was you all's age, I was really calling the special ed system. You know, they had all the dirty names to call for students that were in those classes, such as slow, guitar, or anything you think of. And I could either fold and let it get to me, or I could not flinch, as Julian mentioned earlier, and just punch back by just being successful. How many of you know students who are in this specialized system now? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Tell them I said they're in good company. Are any of you in any special, or have been in any specialized classes? Take pride in your beginnings. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Because a lot of the people that made fun of me when I was in middle school and high school, some of them now come to me for advice on how to deal with their kids because they don't listen <laughs> or respect them the way they gave the teachers a hard time. And another question I want to ask you all to keep you all engaged is, um, if you guys would go anywhere in the world to travel or for vacation, where would it be? Yes. I would go to my. I would go with my mom to Florida to Disneyland. Okay. You. Okay. 
over there in the islands. Anybody else? Yes. Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yes, yes. I'm sure you guys know you have to have some serious, what do they call it? Um, we were just talking about it earlier. Um, water, soda, drip. Is that what y'all say now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the If you want to be successful in life, you have to hold yourself accountable for the mistakes that you make. Because right now, you're at the age where you're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's what you do best. The question is, is how are you going to bounce back from them? When I was your age, I made a lot of mistakes. I was in y'all's position. I stayed in trouble. I, they almost had a like a particular desk in the ISS. And they got, <laughs> I got OSS several times. Saturday detention. Um, you name it, I, I got in. Seventh grade was probably my hardest year, which is probably why I went so hard during the year that I was fellowshipping at Brandon when um, you know, Raekwon came up along with some of his classmates. Because I saw something in them at the time that they may not have saw themselves, and that's potential, and that's strength, and that's character. Because a lot of you come up in good households, two-parent households, middle class, or whichever you like to call it, and your parents are really depending on you to not only make them proud, but to make yourself proud and to make your mark in the world. I've heard all of you talk about what you like to be and what you like to do, and it's okay. Whether you like to go to the NBA or the NFL, or be a doctor or a lawyer, stand up. I care about you all, but I can do this all day long. I'm looking at those probably like, I'm just thinking, shut up. Bear with me, though. Bear with me. Now, as I got through the ranks and got, it, got up to high school, because I was in special ed from like sixth grade all the way up to twelfth grade, stayed being the butt of a lot of people's jokes which is why I turned a lot to sports to help me. And I had a chance of building bonding friendships, such as Mr. Ask and Mr. Fagans and Mr. Van Sam. And we just, we knew what we wanted to do. We knew we didn't want to stay in the same position forever. And that's why it's important with everybody that's coming to talk to you that you take in what they have to say and use it for yourself as you get older. Because time flies. It seemed like it was just yesterday we were here, what, two or three years ago? Yeah. I mean, think about it. Time's not gonna wait for you. Before you know it, it's gonna be time for high school graduation. And it's gonna be time to think about going to college or going to the real world because I can assure you, your parents are not gonna let you live at home forever. You're not going to be eating all their food and burning up their life bill forever. I assure you of that. So it's best that you all take advantage of how good you have it now and take each class that you have seriously. The reason I asked where you would like to go as you get older if you had a chance to because you don't want to limit yourself. It's a whole big world out there. And when I knew I didn't have any college scholarships to look forward to because I didn't have the best of grades, I went to the news and, um, yeah, I think I don't vibrate. I think it's probably the second time I heard that. You don't vibrate? All right. And I had the chance to see the world, and I wanted to make my parents proud. My father was a retired naval officer. He was in the Navy from 63 to 95. Went to Vietnam seven times. Yeah, that, uh, that's where I kind of get my crazy from, because he had all sorts of games when I didn't do what he said, and I can assure you, none of them were fun. But I appreciate them now, and they rest in peace, because he would tell me all the time, you think I'm being hard on you, but I'm not, which I'm sure you probably heard from your coaches and your parents. But the guys that are not here in your position 
Some of them may have people look up to, but I assure you a lot of them may not. And you're gonna see where they end up. 10 to 20 years from now, while you're successful in whichever career path you may choose, they're gonna look at you and wonder why they couldn't make it. Well, they didn't take life as serious as they wanted to. And I went to Iraq in 2005, and it was in 2005 when I really started to develop what I really wanted to do, because when you're out there in the desert for eight months, you know, dodging rounds down range and all of that, um, you tend to take life even more precious and think, okay, what am I gonna do when I get back to, to the world, what they call America? And so I thought about being a special ed teacher first, but I wanted to get back to the same population that I was once in. So I went back to school, and I never said this before, but those students that I had a chance to mentor, like the, the Rayquans and the, uh, I can't remember the other names, the ex Anthony Thomas, uh, the Kai, I can't remember, you know, working with those guys kind of helped save my career path and also helped save my life because as they got to talking to me more about personal things to, to help them get through in life, that's when I realized, okay, maybe it's meant more for me to be a counselor than a teacher. Because as speaking back on when I heard somebody mention therapy earlier, now is the time more than ever where therapy is welcome. It's no longer, you don't have to be ashamed to need somebody to talk to you. You don't have anyone else to talk to. Back when me and Sam and Vegas were growing up, there it was kind of unheard of. You just, you just bottled up your emotions like a man or a grown woman and you just took it. And you didn't, we didn't do that. But nowadays, as a counselor, I get a chance to reach out to young men like you all each and every day and give you all the same words of wisdom that I've given to other students that I've worked with. And um, some it's gotten through to, some it hasn't. So because I never gave up on what I wanted to be, it actually opened doors for me to travel other places. I had a chance to go to Italy. I had a chance to see, uh, I had a chance to live in Africa for three months and see how how things are over there. And as I look around and see all these nice outfits and shoes, and I can tell you all, for every time you don't take a class serious or don't take what your parents say serious, there are those in the motherland along with other countries around the world that are less, that are, have, that are less privileged than you. You're spitting in their face without even knowing. You guys, have running water, which seems very simple here in America, but I've seen some places in Africa where they have to go down by, by a stream with a bucket to get some water, and they have to make that last throughout the whole day. Any of you ever taken bottle showers? <laughs> like a water bottle shower? Oh, like an actual oh. shower. Yeah. What part? If I were more, I'd have to tap on a young man from Kenya. He would be glad to tell you that what I'm saying is it's not a lie. Am I lying? Am I lying? No. So he's, uh, leave him on. This is a serious business. And I'm glad that I had those experiences so I could come back and pour into y'all the future a lot deeper because y'all have a bright future. What are y'all going to do with it? Are you going to. Use it to your advantage and get the best education that you can. Join the military, go to the NFL, or are you going to just fool around and giggle and laugh and think life is a joke? I'm going to end with this because I hate to feel like I'm, you know, talking to the deaf on make sure you have just enough to remember and not talk to you too long when you forget a lot of what I say. Hold yourself accountable for the things that you do that are not 
to the best of your ability. Meaning that if the coach calls you out for something that you know you could have done better at, don't look around and get defensive. Bounce back and see what you can do better. That's what I had to do when I got to college. As a recall was saying earlier, that's true. It was three hour lectures when I went for my masters. Sitting in classes like these for three hours at a time was, man, it was, it was a lot, but what kept me going was thinking about reaching out to the future leaders of the world. Because you all have something special in you, you just have to dig deep down and get it. Like, when it, because like they said earlier, they thought the Hobbes said earlier, heartbreaks will come. There will be hard times ahead, and you can either handle it, and be like, okay, what am I going to do now? Or you can just roll over. And um, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, I don't leave enough time for any, any questions. Anybody have any questions? I'm scared to ask, but yes. I'm just going to do the stand-up thing. Oh, wow. Well, that's not okay. It's a good question. I was doing that as a respect exercise. Are you listening? Yeah. You just yeah. kind of answered my question right there. That was the reason I did that, was to get you all's attention, because a lot of these adults took time out of their busy schedule to pour into you words of wisdom. They didn't have to be here, but they're here because they care. I decided to take it up a notch by doing something that'll kind of make you all hate me for a few seconds, but as years go by and you're thinking, you'll be like, man, like, he, I see why he was like that. Because the real world's not going to forgive you. It's not, sometimes, it won't give you a second chance. You go to a job interview and they see you not taking it serious, then you're like, all right, next. So that was why I did that, to remind you all how important respect is. And um, I saw that. But uh, please appreciate everything that the coach and his assistant coaches and the other parents are doing for you because there's a million other things he could be doing, but he chooses to be here to help you all. And um, one more thing take care of what you have. Going back to the whole um, realizing how blessed you are, because I see all of you dress nice and everything, and you all may not believe this, but this is the first suit I ever bought with my first paycheck when I was 17. I'm 38 now. The reason I choose to wear this every time they have this is to let you know that you never know when the next time you'll get something nice or fly, whatever y'all say, because nothing in life is guaranteed. So. Live every day like it's your last, and you'll be okay. Thank you. Thank you. Middle school, a lot of y'all probably don't know, but I'm sure you got the one of the next people to come up. Mr. Clemens, he was, you know, a big, a big help and a big, I know a lot of y'all sitting here, and it's been pretty long for a lot of y'all to listen to all these guest speakers, but I hope that y'all are really taking it in. And the reason why I say that is because years ago, I was just sitting just like y'all, some of y'all, Around the same age as a lot of y'all, listen to Mr. Clinton trying to tell me, hey, you know, this is you know, you go about things this way, this is the right way to do stuff. You know, just the same motivational speeches that they were just giving y'all, you know. I just really want y'all to know that if you actually take the time to listen to them and actually take everything, not everything they say has to be something that y'all that might relate to you or might be helpful to you, but something might not be helpful to you now, might be helpful to you further on down the line. So um, a couple of the goals that I got in the next four, four maybe four years, I actually want to just you know probably my first goal is to be out out my mom's house, out my parents, out my parents' house. That's probably my first goal in the next four years. I want to have my own place. I want to be able to say um, have my own place, my own car, and hopefully I'm 22, about to be 23 next week, and I still don't know what I want to do. I don't, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm working, I'm not, I, mean, I, but I don't know really what I wanna do yet. I mean, it's okay, it's not, it's no rush. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these guys that came up here today, they still got stuff that they're trying to do at the age of 30. Like, 
I know the doctor, he, he said that he has stuff that he's still doing. He's got these books that he's writing. So it's a lot I know I spoke with Mr. Askew this morning. He told me, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what it is that I want to do. And I look at him as a successful man. Like, that's somebody I want to be like. You know, so and Mr. Clemens, I know there's probably still a lot of stuff that he wants to do in life. And that man has accomplished a lot of things. And I speak with Mr. Clemens so much because, like I said, I worked for him for about a year, personally. And, and I just took in what he told me sometimes. Now, not everything that he told me was up to me, but a lot of the things that he told me was very helpful. So I say that to say, just take it step by step, you know, be into this like this. A lot of y'all probably want to be college, y'all want to be college athletes. You will have to sit in lecture labs like this. So I hope that you are really listening and paying attention and not giggling and goofing off because soon, especially y'all, y'all are going to be sitting in three hour lecture college classes and it's like, oh, can I get a break? Do I get out of here? When it, and it, and it's, it, there is no breaks, but if that's what you want, you're a student athlete first. So before it becomes athlete, it becomes a student. You got to get the grade. So besides having my own house, I think my next goal is to just probably try to give back. That's my next goal. Once, I, once I'm successful and once I figure out what it is that I want to do, even when I'm trying to take the steps to get here, I still want to take a chance to be able to give back. You know, I haven't been out. I, I got a lot going on right now. And I haven't been out there that much to support y'all track game, but I'm watching. I promise y'all. I told Christian today, wherever Christian lives, I told him today, man. I told his dad, too. I'm watching from Instagram, man. I'm watching from social media. Even if I'm not physically out there, I'm watching. Kari, I'm watching. I promise you I'm watching. I'm still there watching. Jermaine, I'm watching. I was, when, when I heard about you, man, I was hurt, man. I hope for the best. You got an injury is an injury. I tore my ligament in high school. I ran, I, I ran, ran track in high school. I ran college track, so you know. I tore my ligament. That was probably my senior year. It was probably the biggest thing that hurt me because I had to make a decision whether it was go through therapy, go to rehab, or try to suck it up and try to, because I didn't have the office that I wanted. So it's, you, you you are what you make of yourself, you get what I'm trying to say? So I, I am watching you guys, so that's probably my second goal. I want to give back, I want to be able to help out with y'all. You know, so a lot of the younger things, I know a lot of y'all probably don't know me that well, because I haven't been there. I know Rashawn, he definitely knows me. He should anyways, he might not remember, but he definitely should know me. But a lot of you younger know, things, I want to, in the next four years, I want to, when y'all are there, I want to help out with y'all. I want to be able to come out here and hopefully be a speaker like one of the guests we had today and be able to tell y'all, well, this was my story. These are the steps that I had to take to get there. But that's probably it. And my two goals is, is to have my own house and be able to give back. That's really it. My own, I want to build my own foundation. So in the next four years, I want to be where, where I want to be in, in a good situation to be where I want to go. Except, so that was it. Thank you guys. And what makes the Titans different than other youth basketball organizations out there? I guess I'll start with that first. I don't have an organization. I'm a part of one. I don't have one. But uh, to be a part of the Titan organization is, is a wonderful thing. It's, it's, it's better than most organizations because, you know, we, we truly care about our, our kids, our, our people, our families, um, our friends. So, um, that kind of separates us. It's 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 genuine. It's not you know people are not around just for the, you know, the the money or right. the fame like or to take over. People are really around because they want to be a part of something great, and that's a difference in our organization. Than most. Hey. Thank <laughs> you.